This is an interview with Joseph DiCarlo, Jr. for the Stoneham Public Library, Stoneham Oral History Project by Maxine G. Schultz at the Stoneham Library on Monday, June 30th, 1975 at 7.30 p.m. Joseph DiCarlo, Jr., Grand Knight of the Knights of Columbus in Stoneham, before we begin talking about the Knights of Columbus, would you like to talk a little bit about yourself, Mr. DiCarlo? Yes. My name is Joseph J. DiCarlo, Jr., and I reside at 12 Central Street in Stoneham, Mass. I was born in Boston, Mass., and lived in Somerville for nine years, and then moved to Stoneham 13 years ago. I am married to the former Stephanie Rose, who lives in High Street in Stoneham. I have one child, Jason Michael, and I have another one on the way. Well, isn't that, isn't that a delight? I'm glad to hear that, uh, uh, Joe. Well, uh, now we can talk about the Knights of Columbus. It's a great, outstanding uh, fraternal order in Stoneham. So tell me, when did you join uh, the Knights? Oh, I joined the Knights of Columbus in 1967, approximately eight years ago. Uh, I was more or less uh, one of the younger members, single, and and certainly coming up in the autumn. Mm -hmm. I joined the Knights of Columbus because of a desire to vote what spare time I had to a worthwhile cause, that is, serving my fellow man, while at the same time enjoying a social slate of activities with men like myself, and of course at the same age. Well, that certainly is a good enough reason, Joe. Fine. Uh, tell me, what are the requirements needed uh, for a young man to join the Knights of Columbus? Okay. The main requirements for membership in the Knights of Columbus are that a man be a good practicing Catholic, 18 years or older, who is willing to devote himself to aid his fellow man. This being uh, uh, socially, physical help, anything as far as community affairs are concerned. And certainly a good way of family life. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is uh, a question I just happened to think of, uh, Joe. Is there a woman's auxiliary uh, uh, any, in anything similar to the uh, Knights of Columbus? Do they have any, uh, uh, any they part they play? No. Women usually don't have what you, what you might say their own council or order, mm -hmm. but they do work very closely with their husbands, whether it be as an officer or working on committees or even up at bingo. The women are constantly involved, helping mm. out, especially picnics and youth activities. Their time is quite busy mm. enough working with their husbands and family along in the Knights of Columbus. Oh, that's good. Uh, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, when was the Stoneham uh, KFC, as it is so very familiarly uh, known, organized? Uh, the Stoneham Knights of Columbus was first organized at the turn of the century in 1899. Mm. The first meetings were held at the church, and later on at the rooms above the, the old bell block in Stoneham Center were used until that burned down. And then we recently, uh, I wouldn't say so much recently, but in the past 20 years or so, we have purchased the old St. Patrick's Elementary School for our, for our home now. Mm -hmm. And we have renovated it and made it to look like a pretty reasonable, sociable mm -hmm. organization. 1899, then uh, the Knights of Columbus have played a very long-standing and important part in Stoneham's history. Right. I, I think that's... Seventy-five years. We yeah. held our 75th anniversary this year. Oh, isn't that something to be proud of? I'm very glad to hear that. Now, you are the Grand Knight. Now, that is the highest that you can go in the Stoneham Knights of Columbus. Is that right? As far as the Stoneham Knights. Right. Concerned. Right. And so when did you become a Grand Knight? Uh, I became Grand Knight as of July 1st, 1974. Mm-hmm. The main duty of a Grand Knight is to more or less maintain the stability of his council. He is a physical as well as a spiritual advisor to all various committees within the council. This office will be held for 12 months until July 1st, 1975. Mm -hmm. So uh, who did you succeed? Now, who was the former uh, Grand Knight? And what does he call now? Was he a past, past Grand, Grand Knight? Knight. All, all right. right. I succeeded past Grand Knight Michael B. Pinelli, who is an attorney at law. I climbed the succession of chairs until I reached the position of Grand Knight. Other offices 
which I have held include the outside God, the inside God, the Warden, and the Chancel, mm -hmm. and now Grand Knight. All right. And you've already mentioned what your duties are, have you not, or are you going to elaborate on that? I think you, I think you probably covered those, did you? Yeah, as far as being a spiritual and, and physical physical leaders, leader is concerned and maintain the financial stability of the council. Of course, you're, you're, you're head of all various committees mm -hmm. to make sure they're all carried out. And, and I think probably later on we'll get into that particular six-point program, which are six basic committees which the Knights of Columbus evolve around. Mm -hmm. Then it's a big, time-consuming job. Very much so. At least six nights a week. Oh, yes, I can see that. Well, who are your other uh, present officers, uh, Mr. DeCarlo? Do you want to uh, list the names of names of all these men? Okay. I think they really deserve to be mentioned. They're giving their time to a very good and wonderful order. I have uh, Deputy Grand Knight Gerald Hurley, which uh, has been the new Grand Knight elect and is the new Grand Knight for 1975-76. We have Chancellor James F. Kirk. Warden Edward F. Gay Jr. Then we have the recorder, which is Eugene J. Cronin. Our financial secretary, who oversees all financial matters, is Albert A. Mitchell, our town custodian, by the way. Mm. Treasurer E. Russell Schultz, who maintains all the financials in the council. Lecturer Frank Kaminsky, in turn sets up lecture programs for the members and their family. We have our advocate. Robert O'Neill, our inside guard Henry Lee, outside guard William Meeks, and our trustees are one year Dennis Broderick, two years David F. Roach, and three years Michael V. Pinelli, and our chaplain is Eugene P. E. Cronin. Now, do you have any uh, committees all set up for the year, and do you have members on them? Do you want to talk about any of these? Uh, okay, well, we have a membership committee which is very important to the council. They bring in our new members, and uh, right now we're striving to get more of the younger members in, mm -hmm. and that is our Chancellor James F. Kirk. Mm -hmm. We have civic activities, and more or less dealing with community affairs, and that's our Deputy Grand Knight, Jerry Hurley. Mm -hmm. We have a program chairman who is involved more or less with all the socials of the year and setting up different programs for the family such as picnics and breakfasts etc et and so on and that is Edward Gay Jr. and Lou Galini. Other various committees such as youth activities. We have Tim Harrington who's involved with the with the hockey, uh, setting up children's Christmas parties and and uh, other various sports for the children of the council and the community. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see, we have... Thank Seems like you've got a lot of things going, haven't you? Oh, we certainly, we certainly do. Senior citizens, we have a certain committee for our, for our senior citizens, which is chaired by me. Matter of fact, we just got through painting the kitchen up there. They, we, we just cleaned up and painted the kitchen. They asked, they request us from the Knights of Columbus that we help them uh, clean up their kitchen, and we just oh. got through painting it for them. Isn't that uh, fine? That's wonderful. Just thousands of committees, mm -hmm. all, all, all subcommittees too, whether it be a 75th anniversary or house committee rules. Mm -hmm. uh, there are just numerous amounts and of committees. And you're doing a lot of charitable work. Right. The overall council, as far as Supreme Council is concerned, we've donated over $17 million this year, as far as funds are concerned. Uh, the, new, uh, the number of hours the Knights of Columbus in a whole put in are just too numerous to mention too numerous to mention as far as working involved, as far as the community mm -hmm. is concerned. Of course, we're deeply involved with the pro-life movement. Well, very civic-minded people, aren't you? Isn't this great that you're all so involved? Try to be. Oh, it's good to hear these things, really. Uh, tell me, uh, Mr. DeCarlo, what is your present membership of the Stoneham uh, Knights of Columbus? Yeah. The present membership of the Stoneham Council is 370 men. Younger men make up a large percentage of the newer candidates during the organization, which we find oh. is very refreshing. The average age of these men is around 25. Mm -hmm. The overall average age, as far as the group is concerned, on the whole council is between 35 and 45 years of age. Well, you're a young group of men. You have the vitality to do all this work. 
That's encouraging. It's good to uh, hear that. Uh, do you want to talk about the main purpose of the Knights of Columbus? The Knights of Columbus is a fraternal organization. It is based on four principles, charity, unity, fraternity, and patriotism. And the greatest of these is being charity. The Knights of Columbus is, is known as the right hand of the Catholic Church. Wonderful. Therefore, its major role and reason for existence is to serve the Church. Service to the community is also a major function of our organization. Very good. I know you've mentioned all of the uh, benevolent duties that are carried on by your order. Now, how about the social times? I'm sure with all the women and their busy uh, preparing your dinners and your luncheons and you have, do you have dinner dances and so forth? Oh, uh, sure we do. Sure. Italian nights, Irish nights. Good. We have a, good. an excellent social program. As I stated above, the main function of our organization is, is that of benevolence. However, it is mm -hmm. not all work and, and no play. Mm -hmm. A variety of social functions are sponsored for the enjoyment of the membership. For example, we have a bowling league, we have a golf league, we have a hockey team, plus a variety of social events. We have one approximately one every month for men as well as women during the calendar year. Fine. Now, uh, what are um, some of the services rendered to the community? You've mentioned a few, but if you'd like to elaborate on that, Joe, you can go right ahead and do so. Services to the community include, we have a blood program, which is headed by uh, Eddie O'Connell. Uh, we help more or less anybody in need of blood, not only Knights of Columbus, but I know we had a friend of the church's, Nick Amato, who was seriously injured in an automobile accident mm -hmm. and a request was made to the Knights of Columbus and we managed to raise 18 pints of blood for his benefit. Okay. Aid to the Council on Aging. Like I mentioned before, we are, we are constantly helping, trying to help out our senior citizens mm -hmm. uh, in any way we can, whether it be financially or physically. Mm -hmm. uh, we sponsor scholarship to the graduating seniors in the Dr. Devlin Fund. Yes. Aid to the Little League, Pop Warner, Youth Hockey, through cash donations, through the use of our function hall, and many of our members are coaches of, of baseball teams, and uh, Brother Tim Harrington is in charge of Pop Warner, and we have Brother Don Jameson who's in charge of baseball, Pony League. Uh, we have just many members who are constantly involved as far as uh, community affairs are concerned, whether it be down at the church as far as ushering and, and, mm -hmm. and helping out Good. down there with their dilemmas. Also, uh, aid to the hospital as far as participation on the annual hospital day. And I know we've, we've raised some money for them, uh, whether it being $300 being given to them to help them out with, with their financial assistance. Well, you are uh, a very busy group and uh, certainly doing a lot of wonderful and worthwhile things. Uh, is there a National Knights of Columbus of which the Stoneham Knights is a member? Yes, the Knights of Columbus is nationally based organization. It is divided into state as well as city and town councils. The head of the entire organization is called the Supreme Council, or Supreme Knight heads mm -hmm. the organization. Mm -hmm. The Supreme offices are located in, in New Haven, Connecticut. There are annual statewide conventions which are always attended by the Grand Knight and other selected offices. Mm -hmm. We have our own insurance companies, mm -hmm. which again uh, are beneficial to the members. And as far as raising scholarships is a, a concern, we have our own scholarships for, for certain children of families who may be in need of money. Mm -hmm. We're able to get them to college. Mm -hmm. And I think that more or less may cover it as far as mm -hmm. the Supreme is concerned. His, the Supreme Grand Knight is Dr. John W. McDivitt. And he's from Malden, by the way. Oh, we're very that's great. privileged to have somebody from Massachusetts. Yes. Now, have you uh, ever attended any meetings in other cities or states? I have attended up Burlington. I have attended their meetings up there. Uh, North Reading Council. Of course, I've, I've just come from the convention, which was held at the Sheridan in Boston, which was statewide. Mm -hmm. Now, the uh, Supreme Convention will be in Miami. And I'm afraid I can't afford to go down to Miami. No. Now, for instance, if were you uh, an active member in good standing, uh, especially the Grand Knight of the Knights of Columbus, if you happened to be in another part of the country, could you just 
show your credentials and walk right. in. Right. We and have we have accepted. a traveler's card, which is given to every member when they uh, are more or less first join or initiated. This travel card enables them to go to any council, no matter where they are in the entire country or outside of the country. Yes. All they have to do is present that travel card, and they can enter the premises. I forgot to ask you, uh, you must pay dues, don't you? Right. And, and how much do you pay? Twenty dollars a year. Uh -huh. That covers the entire dues. You can pay quarterly, which is five dollars, uh, or the whole thing at once, which mm -hmm. is twenty dollars. You're not assessed anything else throughout the year. That covers the entire membership, except socially, uh, socials, which you mm -hmm. know you pay your additional mm -hmm. uh, money. Now, when a man first joins, uh, does that twenty dollars? Does he have to pay any initiation fee? Or does that twenty dollars and just take him through his first year when he first joins. That that takes him through mm -hmm. his first year. They ask no special charge. Well, they ask ten dollars at the beginning, which also covers when he makes his application and so forth. Right, mm -hmm. ten dollars, which covers three months dues plus five dollars initiation mm -hmm. fee. So totally, mm -hmm. if you were to begin from f to be a member, it would cost you totally for the year plus initiation twenty five dollars. Mm -hmm. But uh, the young men are joining, and I'm sure they're very happy being a, a knight. It's a great honor, isn't it? It's it's quite uh, quite an honor. Yes, it um, is. They seem to be having an awful lot of fun getting involved. Even even the members who who do not have families enjoy being up there socially with with again men their own age, with men more experienced. You pick up an awful lot of experience up there with these older men. Mm -hmm. Now, as the Grand Knight of the Stoneham Knights of Columbus, uh, Mr. DiCarlo, uh, what are your hopes and plans for your organization during your term of office? Uh, mm -hmm. The major hope of any Grand Knight is, first of all, to maintain the financial stability of his council. Of course, it's very difficult nowadays, as, as far as a nonprofit organization is going, is to try and raise money to keep, keep the lights on, keep the heat going. Mm -hmm. It's not an easy task, but that's one of his one important task that he has to oversee. Uh, this enables us to carry out all our other charitable endeavors. Mm -hmm. Once we have conquered that, uh, mm -hmm. we're able to put our time and effort into into more charitable causes. Uh, the Supreme Office outlines a six-point program, which serves as a guideline for all the councils during their fraternal year. This encompasses church and council activities, your family program your youth activities, your blood donations, and civil duties, and many, many others. It is the hope of every any Grand Knight to fulfill his obligation to this particular program. The Right to Life campaign is also a major concern of the Knights of Columbus right now, at a national as well as a state and city-wide level. Through various lecture programs, I hope to educate more people on this particular topic and invoke them in a special interest in this very worthwhile and pertinent issue. Well, now, uh, you certainly have some wonderful hopes and, and plans, and I uh, congratulate you on all of them. Uh, will the um, Stoneham uh, Knights participate in Stoneham's bicentennial celebration? Well, we hope very much to. I know we have a particular committee working on it right now, which is chaired by uh, my Chancellor, Jimmy Kirk. Uh, I'm quite sure that the uh, incoming Grand Knight, which is Jerry Hurley, and he takes over next month, will offer his own ideas and any help he can to be this very important celebration. Mm -hmm. What about a float? Do you think you're going to get a float made to put in the October 18th parade? We're, we're thinking of it right now. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, we have nobody experience as far as making a float. First of all, we have to try and find some type of motor vehicle that mm -hmm. we can put one on. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're considering it and hope to be getting a few of the wives in there helping us along. Yeah. And then in August, they're going to have a, uh, oh, a fair up in Church Square. There'll be booths up there. Do you think any of your uh, ladies might have a... A booth up there? Ladies, the men. Oh, the, quite, oh, you're, oh, I thought the ladies quite, were the we're ones quite that did talented. all the social things. Quite talented at that. You're gonna, you might have a uh, booth and, right. and uh, how about the picnic? There's going to be a big town-wide picnic. Yeah. Oh, very much so. Yeah. After all, we have quite a large number of uh, mm -hmm. older members and senior uh, and citizens within our Knights of Columbus, and I'm quite mm -hmm. sure if we sure. don't, they're going to be on us. Yeah, you graduated from Stoneham High, didn't Stoneham you? Stoneham High, 1967. Yeah. So uh, you'll probably be going to that big 
banquet down at the Montvale Plaza, October the 18th. That's the homecoming, uh, the big banquet. All right, I hope very, very much yeah. to it. I, uh, I know that's going to be a, a wonderful uh, evening. Is there anything you'd like to add now about the Knights of Columbus that we may overlook? I don't know all of the kinds of uh, questions you'd like me to ask, so maybe you have something you'd like to say now, Joe, to fill in the spaces that I left out. Uh, I think you did an excellent job of covering the questions magnificently. Well? I'm not sure uh, of anything I might want to add right now. I'm quite proud to be a member of the Knights of Columbus. They certainly try as, as, hard, they c as hard as they can to uh, work with the people in the community as well as, ha as socially having a, a good time. It's rather difficult in, in these days as far as uh, the stress uh, financially. Mm. Uh, we're not able to do everything we want to do. Of course, uh, a lot of things take money. Mm -hmm. And being a nonprofit organization, we just don't have the necessary funds uh, to carry out all of our, our endeavors. I know as far as this year is concerned, uh, we've tried very much to, 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 to introduce new committees such as the senior citizens. We really never did get involved as far as the senior citizens are concerned, but they're very much a part of our community and uh, we must take care of them because they're finding it more and more difficult every day to try and take care of themselves. So this committee is working quite well and we're quite pleased with the results and they're quite pleased. Well, that's a very good thought to uh, bear that in mind. Right, and I know we have mm. another civic activities in the process right now. I know speaking with the newly Grand Knight elect, this year we're, 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 we're financially better off due to uh, our change over in Bino, and uh, we're going to be able to devote a lot more time to the community affairs. Mm. Tell me now, uh, when one says the Knights of Columbus, is Colu does Columbus refer to Christ uh, Christopher Columbus? Christopher Columbus, yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It based around Christopher Columbus. Of course, Father McGivney in 1892, more or less, formed the organization, which was based around the courage of Columbus when he crossed over. This was the national organization was born, uh, was organized in 1892. Right. And Stoneham just organized seven years later. Right. Stoneham uh, was probably one of the, f the first one of the uh, chapters. First, right. right. Wow. Absolutely. Uh, do you have a number or a, n uh, or a title, or do you just call yourselves the Knights of Columbus? You have Council 489. Oh, Council 489. Well, that's great. I kind of forgot to ask you that at the very beginning. Well, uh, Joe, I think you are an outstanding Grand Knight, and all of your men, I'm sure, are very civic-minded, and they are good men. They, they have to be good men to be motivated to join such a good organization. That's because one of the requirements. You have to be uh, a good, outstanding man, because you certainly uh, show uh, brotherly love to each other and to your, you, your country and to your community. And it is a very worthwhile fraternity. And I'm sure you will enlighten many on the Knights of Columbus. It is a wonderful organization, and this has been a wonderful experience for me, meeting you, Joseph DiCarlo, Jr., Grand Knight of the Knights of Columbus of Stoneham. My pleasure. Council 489. And right. thank you very much for coming in, Joe, and participating in our oral history project. Thank you. Whatever we can do, our pleasure. Thank you very much, Joe.